Hello, this is the Electric Eel Wheel Nano 2, and a few people have been having issues with setting up their Nano 2s, so I thought I'd just walk through uh, several of the issues with setup that I've seen people having, and just visually show people what different things they should be checking if you're having trouble spinning with your Nano 2. So the first one is that sometimes when the Nano 2 ships, if you look at the front bearing, it'll look like this, or if the reducer is, install, reducer is installed, um, it might be a little harder to see, but basically what's happening in some of them is it's shipping, let me take this back off so you can see better. So it's shipping so that the front bearing isn't going all the way down into the slot, and what you wanna do if that happens is just give it a firm, press and it should click down and once it's fully installed it'll be perfectly centered like this so just make sure you give a firm press on that front bearing and that will help align things this is a problem with uptake for a lot of people another issue that people have had is that the drive belt so the drive belt is this which goes from the motor down here uh, up to the flyer and that's not installed correctly on some people's and on this one in particular it's, it's not installed correctly so you need to make sure that it's in the groove of the pulley and the motor just like that so you want it in that groove there and then up top you want it in the groove you don't want it in front of the groove like it is right now so you just need to get it into the groove of the flyer like that and so now when the motor spins, the flyer will spin. And if it's not installed correctly, correctly, it sometimes does spin, but just not as fast, or it makes a little bit of noise. Uh, the motor doesn't seem to have power, it slips a lot. So those are two things to check, even if it's spinning, but it just doesn't seem to have enough power or speed. Uh, definitely check those two things out. Another issue that some new spinners have is knowing what to do with the tension band. So that's this elastic band here, and you want it to go into the groove of the bobbin just like that. And then there's the dial here, and you wanna tighten that until it's at least snug, and there's no, uh, it, it isn't like super loose. And then you wanna make small adjustments, and basically the tighter it gets, the more uptake it's gonna have, but for the Nano, you wanna keep it relatively light and just sort of experiment with it and slowly increase the tension as um, needed. Another issue with this pulley that some people run into is that it might come and it's not fully pressed on, so you want to make sure that the pulley is pretty flush with the motor, uh, and if it's not, like here it could come shipped and it might look kind of like that. Uh, in that case, it's going to slip a bit. So if you push it all the way on like that, uh, you should be good to go with the motor pulley. A lot of people ask about the threading of the bobbin and whether their bobbins are assembled correctly. So let's take a, a closer look at the bobbin. So the way it comes is disassembled on both ends like this. And what you want to do is you just want to screw both ends on, sort of like that. And once it gets snug, it's pretty good. You will notice that you can still see about two threads there, and that's perfectly normal. Another common issue that people are unsure of is where to place the sliding hooks on the flyer. So this second hook, you're going to actually move as the bobbin fills up. So you sort of leave it in one position, spin for a while, and then move it to another place so that there's no big bumps on the bobbin. But this first one is stationary, and you want to generally place that about like this so that the yarn here is not going to hit the bobbin, but it's also not really far back with this sharp angle in the yarn. So if you sort of position it just so the yarn's not gonna be hitting the, the edge of the bobbin here, that's sort of the best setup for this stationary hook. Another thing that sometimes happens during shipping is that this drive belt uh, will get a little stretched out. That's why I include a free extra drive belt with the Nano. You can put that new one on and sort of see if it's 
uh, tighter. So what will happen if this is too loose is when you're spinning, uh, the uh, belt will often slip along the motor pulley. So you can replace that with the other drive belt. Uh, I also have links on the electric eel wheel nanotube page to where you can get more of those. Or I sell them in my store too, but you can probably buy uh, more if needed, you know, locally. I have a, another video about this, so I won't go into too much detail. I also don't have a bad orifice reducer locally, but sometimes there's a little bit of plastic on the inside of this orifice reducer, and that causes the yarn to get uh, snagged on it as it's pulling through this hole. So I often don't spin with the reducer, but if you want to reuse the reducer and your yarn's getting stuck, definitely take a look at the inside of your hole and if there's any jaggy plastic in there you can use a modeling knife to remove it and I'll have a link to that video in the description of this one which goes into more detail there. This tension dial shouldn't be hard to turn by any means but sometimes they get a little loose and to address that there's a screw right here and you can just use a screwdriver like this to tighten that screw and sort of tighten it up. Um, I've also found that if you like to have this a little bit tighter and you don't want it to loosen over time, if you just put you know, a little yarn underneath the head of the screw here or a rubber gasket or some felt, pretty much anything that gives the screw uh, a little bit of resistance, that really helps keep the tension uh, of that screw for a longer period of time. But um, it doesn't come that way and I haven't really found a need for it. It's just if you like a little bit firmer dial, that's sort of an option. So one general uh, tip that I have for people who are experiencing issues with uptake or uh, noise is sometimes you can just sort of spin the bobbin like this manually. And right now the tension is on it, but if you take off the tension, it should spin pretty freely. So it's not you know, zero friction, it doesn't spin indefinitely, but it'll spin around kind of like you're seeing here. And if that's not the case, then you have to sort of figure out what's causing that. And doing that without the motor uh, you know, impacting you is often a lot easier. Um, sometimes there's a, a little bit of uh, plastic on the flyer. Uh, this is, these are both rare, but they, they can happen. So sometimes there's a, a little seam of plastic here that's causing the problem and you can you know cut that off with a knife or some sandpaper another time it might have something like that inside the bobbin sometimes just flipping around the bobbin like that will uh, sort of re make the problem go away so one last thing if you're not getting any spin at all from your electric eel wheel nano I sort of suggest disconnecting the uh, drive belt like this plugging it in, and then turning up the dial, making sure you've got the uh, switches all on and things, and seeing if this pulley spins at all. If it doesn't spin at all, one thing you can do is you can just grab, uh, this is a micro USB plug, and these will often come with like older cell phones and things, and instead of the included power supply, you can just sort of test it out with any old uh, micro USB uh, cable plugged into you know a charger or even just a regular USB port and then you can test it out and if you find that it's something to do with the power supply that I sent it definitely contact me I'll have my contact information uh, in the description of this video as well so if it's some kind of a hardware problem like that uh, I'll definitely help out with that hopefully you found these troubleshooting tips useful and thanks for watching